instruction series of videos for Chem 121. Today we're going to be discussing the different types of chemical reactions. Boom goes the dynamite. Dynamite! Sure. Yes. Yes. Cool. I'm Joy Smokey, by the way. And we're going to be presenting this to you today. So chemical reactions. Yeah. We have a whole bunch of different types of them. We do have them bunch of different types of chemical reactions. That's right. So boom goes the dynamite isn't exactly the only thing that happens. Oh no, there's lots of things that happen. Okay, so chemical reactions make lots of stuff go. They do make lots of stuff go. Cool, okay. Right. So let's take a look at the first one. It's our synthesis or culmination as you'll hear it commonly called. Mm -hmm. So that's when you have two or more reactants combining to form a single product. Alright. So an example of this would be Hydrogen and oxygen combining together to form water. All right, very good. All right, so that's pretty simple, nice mm -hmm. simple kind of reaction. However, there is the reverse. When you ta when you have one reactant, single big reactant, and then it breaks apart into two or more different products, mm -hmm. that's what's called decomposition. And then those usually require some heat in order to make it go, because you're essentially trying to break, you know, different chemical bonds, and that requires some energy in the form of heat. And so, would that mean that dynamite going boom would be a form of decomposition? Um, not exactly. It's actually a bit closer to what's called combustion. Ah, okay. That's where a hydrocarbon, like gunpowder, dynamite, well, not really dynamite, but like, you know, gasoline, what have you. Other explosives. Yes. Hydrocarbon, so, plus oxygen gas, and those will combine explosively, violently, and their products are always carbon dioxide and, ironically enough, water. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Just drinking water like we could drink it. Not quite. It's water vapor that's really, really hot. Uh, that would be kind of hot and hard to yeah. drink. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty hard to drink, unless you have, like, filters or something. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. So moving on, we have what's called a single displacement in where we have two things, one's maybe just an element and another that's a, possibly a compound. Mm -hmm. What will happen is that this one will come along and kick, the, and kick one of the parts out, mm -hmm. and as a result, it replaces the part that it kicked out, and the kicked out part becomes its own element or what have you. Oh, okay. So it's essentially A plus BC yields AB plus C. In this case, the C was kicked out, okay. and the A took its place. That makes sense. Yeah, that's a sort of a forced eviction sort of thing. But then you have another case, which is called double displacement, in which two components switch with each other. Mm -hmm. So they change partners, essentially. So you okay. have compound AB and then compound CD. You put them together... And then, in this case, uh, D and B switch partners, and so as a result, you have A, D, and C, B. Okay, so this sounds kind of like, I, I'm, I'm thinking of it like square dancing. So yes, like, you, if know, you must. B and C are like a couple of partners just sitting there dancing, and then A is sitting here all jealous, like, hey, I want to dance with C. So they swap dancing partners, and there we go, that's our product. Kind of this is kind of the drug at the prom, this is more like square dancing. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Now, those are the basic ones. Now I'm going to talk with you about a little more complicated ones, more advanced kinds of reactions. Now, first one in that category is called the oxidation reduction reaction, or redox. And we can't really discuss it in, form, in the form of one single formula, and so we'll have, kind of have to split it into two. Now, an oxidation occurs when you take something and you take a, an electron away from it, and mm -hmm. so as a result, you have the positive, ion, the positive ion, the cation form, and then the extra electron floating around. Now, reduction is different. You actually take something, you add an electron to it, and as a result, you have the anion. Now, since, you know, second law of thermodynamics, you can't create or destroy anything, these can't really happen by themselves. You can't have an electron floating by itself, and you can't mm. just pull an electron out from nowhere. And so what happens as a result is that the oxidation and the reduction are typically paired with each other. You can't have one without the other. 
And so a lot of single displacement reactions are actually types of oxidation reduction reaction because ah. what happens is that the one that's doing the replacing will maybe lose electrons and then the one that's you know being kicked out may gain electrons or vice versa. That kind of makes sense, I guess. Okay. So how come it's called oxidize and reduce? So since it's reduced, wouldn't that mean like taking away the electrons is reduced? That is a very electrons? good question. However, you have to keep in mind electrons are negatively charged. Uh, and when they say reducing, they mean reducing the charge, making it more negative. Uh, and then sense. oxidation, that comes from the fact that, you know, you add oxygen to it. Oxygen is t a good, typically, is what is reduced. And so it's what's called the oxidizing agent. And so it oxidizes. Okay. Now we get on to the last one. Acid-base neutralization. You may have heard of acids. Yeah, acids and bases. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty simple. Yeah. And so they kind of counteract each other. So when you put an acid and base together, the end products are always going to be water and a corresponding salt. All the time. All the time. Really? Yeah. So we have acids and well, acids and bases are both really kind of bad for you just by themselves. Yeah. But when you react them, they actually make water. They make water. That's interesting. So combustion makes water. Acid-base neutralization makes water. Yep. Huh. Interesting, huh? Chemistry is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. So salt, is this going to be just like table salt then? Oh no, a salt is just essentially any kind of ionic compound. You can uh -huh. have magnesium sulfate, you can have potassium iodide, any of those. Those are all salts. Those are all salts. Okay. And Very so good. these are all the several types of reactions. You may not need to know like all of them right off the bat. It's the first five that you're usually concerned with. But do keep these last two in mind, because we will be working with those a bit. I have one last question, though, real yeah. quickly. So the acid-base neutralization, this looks kind of like double displacement, is that right? That's correct. Oh, acid-base okay. neutralization is really another form of double displacement. That's useful to know. That is useful to know. Okay, so basically we just know these main five and we're good to go? Pretty much. All right, all so right. I'm going to see if I can summarize all this real quickly. Synthesis? Two or more things coming together to make one. Mm -hmm. Decomposition, one thing breaking into two or more things. That's right. Combustion, making things go boom, presence of oxygen, mix carbon dioxide and water. Yep. Okay. That's right. Single displacement, swap one partner. Double displacement, you swap two partners. That's right. Okay. Oxidation reduction basically deals with changes in electrons. That's right. Okay. And acid base, um, you basically just neutralize the two together and you get water and salt. That's right. I think I got it. All right. That's good. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. All right. I'll see you later. See ya.